the objective of the third lesson today. Dobrý den. Welcome to the third lesson in Czech language. What was the objective of the two last lessons? To get acquainted with the Czech sounds or phonemes and the relations to their written counterparts, the letters, graphemes, and secondly the exact acoustic realization, which is just the correct pronunciation of uh, the Czech phonemes, which should be learned along with the language with a native speaker. Why? Because there is something which is called stress. Commonly people call it accent. And this is the objective of the third lesson today. The accent. What is stress? I'm talking about the linguistical stress, of course. It's an emphasis given to a certain syllable in the word. Each language will have its own characteristic stress. And if we don't comply with it, if we keep our mother tongue stress, we will be declared as having a foreigner accent. Now, students get sometimes confused about the vowel length and the stress. They are two completely different things. So you will not get confused. And we will see how different they are right now. So what is really the difference between them? You surely do remember from the lesson two that the vowels are short or long and that the vowel length has distinctive function. So a, a, e, 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 etc. The short vowel and its long counterpart are two different phonemes, which means that the vowel length has a distinctive function. A is not the same vowel as a, e, 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 so the grave accent changes the length and it becomes two different phonemes, two different sounds, which will of course have two different meanings. Let's have a look on the distinctive function of long and short walls. Bit means apartment. Beat means to be. Peche means he or she bakes. Péče means care. Dal, he gave. Dal, further. When speaking and hearing Czech, you should be aware of this distinctive function and make the effort of elongating all walls with the grave accent of Čárka. And there is also the Háček and both Čárka and Háček should not be confused with the stress because emphasis is one thing and elongation is another thing. So before I show you exactly how does it work, just let me say that in Czech it is always the first syllable that is stressed regardless of the vowel length. Let's have some examples. Hotel. The stress is on ho. Tel is not stressed. Motocycle. Stress is on mo. Motocycle. Papír. This is the example. We have stress on pa and elongation of the pír. Papír. It's like rhythm in music and the note length in music. So the rhythm falls always on the first syllable, regardless of the fact if the first syllable is also elongated or the following are elongated. They may be. Never mind. You stress the first syllable. An example with the phrase budu brzy doma. Stressing always, I'm stressing the first syllable. 
So now, what is the difference between stress and accent? Stress is a relative emphasis given to a certain syllable in a word. Emphasis, prominence, weight, whatever. While accent is a relative emphasis or prominence given to a certain word in a sentence. So what you use usually when you want to stress a word in a sentence, you isolate it in a way in the phrase. So here we are talking about stress and phases or prominence given to a certain syllable in a word. Motocycle, monographie, Londin. I'm stressing the first syllable. If I do differently, motocycle, Londin, I have a foreign accent and it, it's strange. And immediately people will be more attentive and will try to guess which origin I am from. And as you can hear in English, if you are a native English speaker, surely you can hear my misplaced English stress. Because unconsciously I'm trying to put the stress on the first syllable. So let's my example be a counter example for you. And please listen to my Czech stress. This is the only stress I manage. Okay? I manage correctly, I mean. Some languages have fixed stress, meaning that the stress on virtually any multisyllable word falls on a particular syllable, such as the first. And this is the case of the Czech language. Other languages, as English, have variable stress or unpredictable stress. You see, you are unpredictable and the check is predictable, which makes it easier, much more easier to learn. Without diving into the detail, special rules are applied to the stressing of prepositional groups. So some preposition attracts the stress from the following word. For example, the hotel to the hotel, pro tebe, for you. And some words, however, are unstressed. They are, the most frequent are enclitics and proclitics. But perhaps we will see this later. Now the most important part is to know where the Czech language is stressed and you know it already, it is on the last syllable, right? On the first, yes. So examples. Dobrý den. Jmenuji se Gary. You have noticed that the se was unstressed. It was an enclitikon. Učím se česky. Again, the se is not stressed. Jsem velmi inteligentní. Rád vás poznávám. The stress is always on the first syllable. So enclitics are words following immediately the preceding stressed word. Proclitics are certain words preceding a stressed word. For example, pan Novák, Mr. Novák. Ten projekt, the project. So adopt the Czech stress attitude. Stress the first syllable. Be a Gary. Brzy naschledanou.